from the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Loyola News Chicago. I'm Marissa Heiblum. And I'm Katherine Murphy. Here's the latest news. Loyola's biodiesel program is finally able to start selling its products. Loyola is the first school in the country to be certified to sell biodiesel by both the state and federal government. The biodiesel made in the lab all started out as cooking oil from Loyola's kitchens. The oil is converted over a series of days until it's finally purified into fuel. Before now, vehicles weren't allowed to run it on public roads, but the new certifications have changed that. When we make biodiesel, um, the waste cooking oil uh, basically gets split into two products, biodiesel and glycerin. Uh, and the glycerin can be further cleaned up um, to make it into a soap product. Um, glycerin is one of these products with a million uses, you know, from heart medicine to soaps. Um, we make a nice liquid soap out of it. The refinement process also produces glycerin, which the lab is planning to sell as soap. The National Biodiesel Board has agreed to buy a large amount of the soap to hand out at its conventions. For everyone else, the soap costs $8 and will be available soon on campus and elsewhere. Employees at the Loyola University Health System are required to get their flu shots this year. Last year, flu shots were only suggested to employees and exceptions were allowed due to religious beliefs and medical conditions. But this year, Loyola's Medical Center made flu shots mandatory for employment. Loyola is one of the first in the nation to do this. The flu is a virus that attacks the respiratory system. It is also highly contagious. Binge drinking appears to be a bigger problem here in Illinois than in many other states. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Midwest is among the states with the highest cases of binge drinking. While Illinois, Wisconsin, and Iowa are some of the Midwest states with the highest cases, two neighboring states, Indiana and Kentucky, ranked the lowest. Starbucks is saying quality over quantity and telling its hurried baristas to slow down. Ashley Barnes is live outside our studio with more information and just how customers feel about waiting. Ashley? Thanks, Catherine. And as we all know, Starbucks is known for its exceptional coffee and making coffee just pretty much cool. But recently, some people have been complaining about what's been going on. They're saying that the service and the coffee at Starbucks is falling. Now they're responding. At Starbucks. And they're saying that some of the changes can often make the drinks really slow. And barista can only make drinks two at a time, and that they can only also have one steaming cup of coffee per time, rather than what they used to do, making a whole quart of coffee at a time. Some of these changes could potentially cause some of the drinks to take double the amount of time, and some customers are unsure about the wait. If the caffeine is still the same, I will wait in line for my coffee. Unfortunately, I need it every day. <laughs> I'm not that important. I wouldn't mind waiting in line, but when I drink coffee the most is uh, during school and in between classes, so waiting in line would make it impossible to get Starbucks, so I'd probably buy it less. And as coffee prices are already on the rise, some customers are already looking for other ways to make their own coffee at home. Now this can either make or to break it for coffee. For Starbucks, they hope that the quality over quantity can change and bring some of their customers back. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Ashley. It will be interesting to see how that one plays out. Sure will. Sick of those extra charges on your cell phone bill just because you go over your calling and texting limits? Find out how the FCC may have found a solution to your problem. Be careful what you blog. Guidelines for bloggers could be on the horizon. Stay tuned to find out more. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I did nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. At least we're trying to sort of say, these are some things you are probably going to have to deal with at some point while you're, as a blogger, going to um, be... 
This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I did nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. Welcome back to Loyola New Chicago. Welcome back to Loyola New Chicago. The new world of blogging is creating some interesting issues for bloggers and those who use them. Loyola Center for Digital Ethics and Policy has come up with some guidelines. Professor Adrian Massinari says the guide was inspired by the fact that bloggers don't always follow journalistic standards. This is a kind of first step in, in making the case that these are there's some new interesting issues that are arising and we really need to consider them. Um, and consider sort of the ethical implications of what happens when um, in this new medium. Massonari hopes the guidelines will help bloggers decide what to include in their blogs and how to handle issues ranging from identifying authors to dealing with a comment section. At least we're trying to sort of say these are some things you are probably going to have to deal with at some point while you're as a blogger going to um, be confronted with some of these issues and that hopefully this will get you started thinking about them sooner rather than later. <laughs> The Center for Digital Ethics is located in the School of Communication. The center will host a conference later this month on news literacy and digital citizenship. Calls and texts that go past your usage limit can certainly rack up a hefty bill. But the FCC is proposing rules that may force cell phone carriers to notify you before they can charge you. The FCC has conducted a survey with results showing how 30 million people experience these unexpected charges, often adding up to $50 or more. The Commission is expected to vote Thursday to proceed with the rules, which would be open for public comment before taking effect. We just finished the fall break, but some students are already working on their end of semester projects. The student organization known as the Dance Company, or TDC, is rehearsing for its semi-annual performance that will take place in December. The show will feature a variety of dance styles, everything from ballet and jazz to contemporary and hip-hop. People should absolutely come and see the dance company performance because it gives you a different taste of what dance is at Loyola. It's not classroom work, it's not combinations, the teacher has never seen it, it's purely our personality, our style, and our dance. <laughs> the members of TDC choreographed each of the 15 original pieces that will be featured in the performance. The show's finale will highlight all 34 <laughs> members in a dance choreographed to the song Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. You can join the Dance Company's Facebook group for updates as the show comes together. The show will be December 11th at 7 p.m. An eight-year-old Elmwood Park girl is taking her giggle to the Big Apple. After entering Jell-O's Give It a Giggle contest, Jackie Chavez won the online vote. She got some pretty great prizes too, including $500 and a trip to New York, where she will record a commercial with comedian Bill Cosby. How about that, Marissa? <laughs> Sounds like she hit the last laugh. <laughs> That's our news for now. Thanks for watching. Check us out next week for more Loyola News Chicago.